Good afternoon from my side too. Um, my name is Milot Yerovand, as already uh, introduced. I'm with Bosch Engineering, um, generally responsible for software on mobile robotic. Um, we are developing platform for this, which I'm going to shortly introduce. Um, let's start who we are. <coughs> yeah, I started Russ. Um, almost in 2010, I think it was the version called Sea Turtle in that time. Um, kind of a fan of open source robotics um, in that time. Yeah, Ross was quite early at that stage, but always attracted at least my attention. Um, yeah, I'm with bigger organization, Bosch Engineering GmbH. Um, our main business in Bosch Engineering is, of course, automotive. However, uh, we do mobile robotics, um, especially in focus, and our focus is uh, development of solutions for three main area of cleaning robots, professional cleaning robots, um, off-road application in general, and intralogistic robotics. However, bigger Bosch, a lot of activities in the area of mobility solution in general, uh, coming from a small robotics like uh, vacuum cleaners, robotic mowers. Or, uh, yeah, bigger one like automotive, autonomous driving, and so on. So, um, I tried to summarize a little bit picture here to focus on one point that um, is a lot of know-how on how mobile robotic developments or mobility solution developments is happening within uh, Bosch in general. Um, so this talk will be not too much on the functional level, how we can develop function itself, a little bit beyond function, how we can uh, develop process uh, in a better way if we want to develop any, uh, let's say, mobility solutions. <coughs> so by that, I would like to kind of <laughs> come back a bit too early. If you remember one of your early robot system that you have built, I remember mine. <laughs> If it just helps, yeah. I remember it was 2010. Um, it was one of my early robotic systems that I started to build. It has two wheels in front, one caster back. And as a student, master student, um, I was supposed to build a kind of uh, object recognition classification software on top. Kind of exciting in that time. And then what happened? We started with design like we were three, a student. We started with design of basic architecture, of course. Then found components, integrate those components together, like finding software to them. And then what happens, we ended up into a very nice loop, which um, more or less now I see a lot of similarity when I look at the greater Bosch and also our customer discussion with many companies. So first of all, when you integrate things, thing doesn't fit. A lot of dependency doesn't match. A lot of uh, input output doesn't match. Even some sim some simple naming, like in Rust word, uh, topic namings, and a lot of things there, yeah, doesn't work. Then tons of res uh, errors have appears. You have to spend a kind of a long time to just do debugging. Lots of these those debugging could have been, in our point of view, cancelled from early beginning. Um, after that, for us as a student, it was like, yeah, the first system worked, but I remember my professor came to us and said, uh, can you change, in that time it was an array of uh, sonar in front, he asked, can you change that with the Hokoyo sensor, and we have some extra module, can you change this, uh, to see how the performance would look like. We changed that, but we came up that we have to change the architecture as well. And changing the architecture, changing the components, again, the same loop. So I just wanted to flash back and link it to some know-how or experiences that we have in Bosch, in one hand. And the second hand, last year we discussed with almost 100 companies in Europe and America, and uh, our aim was to figure it out how is the process of development of a new product especially mobile robotic product. Very sim similar <laughs> circle we found it in a lot of companies, including us. Which is kind of a little bit sad to see that after many years of developments. So what are the reasons? Um, of course, mobile robotics in general, 
is a lot of variation in their use cases. Every single type of robot needs different type of sensing system, different type of functions, which makes software complex. I think I don't need to stress that anymore. We have seen uh, since yesterday to now that this topic got kind of stressed a lot, that software is complex. I think an, a small robot, the smallest or simplest robot that we have, it has 30 different big component or pro, uh, uh, packages on top, which integrating of them, like making them really running is kind of a pain. Um, we figured out that lots of companies that we discussed with, they just do the integration of modules somehow. Very little of them, they even thought about having a structural integration or deployment approach. Uh, with that, they could have saved a lot of time for development of um, uh, their products, but yeah, it's missing. And surprisingly, that point, I think we don't want to hear it, maybe now, but... Um, so Martin yesterday mentioned service robotics, 70% of them almost use Rust. We agree with our, let's say, a smaller um, customer discovery. We had discussion with 100 companies. But the problem is, as soon as you ask them how many of you use Rust in your final product, this number goes quite down. I don't want to say how many from this 100, but it was quite low numbers. And one of the main reasons was um, they couldn't make it to series. And interestingly was they didn't have problem with Rust Core, so they never had Rust Core crash, for example. But the whole ecosystem around it, the integration efforts and so on, kind of forced them to switch to their own system, which is also kind of a point that, in my point of view, uh, this community, Rust Industrial community, can help a lot on this to, to get rid of this problem. And um, yeah, a step from prototyping to a uh, series solution is quite huge for many companies. We have seen many that they really start from zero afterwards. And starting from zero is another extra two years of development, three years of developments. And could result to that. Um, many were saying that this is really value of this. Um, that, yeah, they should have thought about that from the beginning that they don't really end it up there. So um, when we look at like how the mobile robotic development should look like, this is at least my wish list. <laughs> that um, um, so kind of if I have a set of uh, robotic hardware that um, uh, our colleague today mentioned, if that happens, modular hardware comes up and people can build up different modules on top of each other and then get rid of kind of um, a long delay for robotic hardware development. So it is ongoing. Hopefully more comes soon. Um, there are a lot of sensor and other hardware already in the market one can put on top of the machine. But then even interfacing to hardware, so uh, we had the discussion from Ingo, so even like sensor drivers, basic drivers is a still a problem a still uh, for many robot developers. Um, software functions, lots of good activities going on, but um, just one simple example, as soon as you want to select, for example, one Islam solutions, there are already many of them. Um, which of them suits best to your application? It's really hard, so you have to get one, try it, and then either it works or doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you just already lose two, three months to just integrate it, benchmark it, and so on. And then you switch the second one, and then you switch the third one, and so on. Um, this is also an issue. And again, there is really a big lack of a structural way how to integrate and deploy softwares on the target PC, on the robot. Um, would be great if we have it a structural done. Um, and on the operational side, in mobile robotics, this is very common that you have a kind of fleet management server or a server that you can communicate or uh, remotely control your um, um, robots. This is also needed. And more importantly, um, if at the end of the day there are people who are willing to perform um, uh, uh, development supports next to real customers, next to those guys that are developing mobile robotics. Um, yeah, we could of course in, uh, a little bit contribute to this part and our aim is up to our extent uh, we contribute on the, the, the part that software starts. And um, 
by that, our main focus is uh, that one. We have built a platform, a software platform, which our aim is to realize fast, but is still reliable. So not fast and dirty, but fast and reliable um, use cases, which we believe it should be like this, um, that people really at the early stage of development of uh, their robotics uh, developments, they think about serious solutions, if they are serious, and if they want to bring product into market. Um, with all of those Rust toolings, all of those good activities, in our point of view, is possible if the mindset is quite uh, considered from the beginning. And at the end of the day, as I already mentioned, we need to realize use cases that faces take care of uh, step-by-step -step developments uh, next to the customers. And yeah, bringing the market solution into real use case is our, uh, let's say, focus. So <laughs> what are the features of that platform that we already mentioned? The platform is based on Rust. Is actually on top of Rust. It has seven main features. So it's, um, it's coming from, uh, let's say, architecture know-how that we already have. Um, as I already mentioned, we have different experience. And we figured out that architecture is one of the most important things. Um, it's true that many people, at the beginning of prototyping, they think that, OK, if they put navigation plus localization module, they can run the first mobile robots. But it's not like this. It's really much, much complex. Just, just to give you an example, if you don't think about like versioning management, only software versioning management, which seems quite easy, yeah? But if, since like you are at the end of prototyping and then you want to integrate such a small module, you have to come back, you have to change your data uh, structure um, um, and, and so on. So it's a lot of effort afterwards to think about those small things. Why not start with an architecture that has up to some level maturity? And for us, Modularity is one of the key points. So the components in the architecture should have the chance to follow the building blocks uh, principle and can be easily exchanged. Um, we have already defined a standards how the module should communicate with each other, how the input output should be. So thanks to Russ, it's up to very good extent um, kind of uh, getting a standard. However, it's not enough. One need to take care of that. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> one need to take care of that kind of um, in a let's say unified way. That um, into like when one goes to the a step of integration, take care of that. Um, reliability also. Every single module in our platform has gone through a testing and reliability procedure. We had two great talks yesterday and today. And you know how hard it is to kind of come up to a reliable module. Um, this is also one of the key points we need also partner further to, to work on this point. But however, for us, um, a module that goes into our platform should have some requirements. And one of the most important one is every single module should has a kind of service or support background. If it comes from external company, we are welcome. But the company should, or let's say, if it is, comes from open source, somebody should kind of make sure that things are working there. Um, integration, um, which is the hop, um, ma main topic uh, for this presentation also, um, we aim that not only Rust experts are able to use, um, let's say, Rust system or deploy Rust system into external machine or current kind of uh, robot, but also even non-experts um, are able, by a few clicks, deploy a whole software into a robot. Um, that one I would shortly mention, like show it in, in the uh, short video from our software, how the principle looks like. And um, yeah, deployment, again, um, deployment for us means professional deployment. For example, we have an automated um, tool chain that we can uh, directly create uh, automatic Yocto image on the target PC. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with Yocto, but creating Yocto image is also taking lots of months if you want to do it every time by yourself. But you can use the, the chance to kind of um, get that one here. Um, another topic is software management. 
I know this is a process that most of people uh, may forget up to sometimes after starting kind of developments, how to manage repositories, how to manage like versioning of the software and, and so on. But these are processes that uh, it makes fully sense to be considered really at early at the beginning and follow a standard for this. And finally, the update concept. So actually, every single module in our platform can get updated by, again, a few clicks. Um, to just give you an impression how we implement or how we use our platform into use cases, um, in principle, like we are looking for different use cases coming from a small robot to rather bigger machine. Uh, actually, for example, this I'm not show the uh, I'm not able to show the picture, but this is really like a big machine, kind of eight meter by eight meter or something like this, and that one is like clear past jackal, which you know is so small. Um, <coughs> so at the end of the day, it's like this that from the machine side, from communication drive, HMI, and so on, we have restrictions, we have requirements. Um, of course hardly connected to a central control unit. This could be even automotive control unit or typical industrial PC. Um, that's kind of one type of requirements that we achieve, which comes from use case and the machine. Um, also, maybe from customer request. From the other side, there are lots of sensor sets already available in the market. Um, this can come from robotics or automotive. We are working and trying to bring this gap and hopefully marry them together. Um, via our software, what we can do is we can create kind of an image on the um, um, control unit that has different layers. So if you're familiar with, for example, Yocto, Yocto is layer-based system that um, our image can kind of includes the real basic layers to high level, which inclusion of the customer software will be involved on this. Um, so how the software works, uh, this is just an example of our software from one of the project, uh, which has less confidentiality inside. And just to show you the principle, so um, the software, as I already mentioned, is designed in a way that uh, kind of simplicity is the key factor on this. So um, if you have a look, like it has mainly five parts. Uh, the first one is to select the features. Uh, whatever feature is kind of estimated to go through uh, um, the, the, the use case. Actually, the idea is that there is already a system engineering in background, and uh, the customer or the user knows what component, what features, and so on they need to use. So um, the idea is quite simple. Um, if it works, hopefully, yeah. Um, select the feature that you want. It's just a few clicks here. I think. We didn't click here for with the fast uh, uh, show, show uh, pre a screenshot preparation, but anyway, so you have range of different features. You can select among them uh, what uh, functions to go into your um, uh, platform. Then you choose the type of sensor you are using. If you want to switch from one sensor to other one, it's kind of really we try to have it like really with few clicks. And uh, you see that the list is not so big, and this is on purpose because we don't want with every single project, every functions just pop up. Just only relevant uh, uh, um, things will pop up. Uh, these are platforms which are from open source, and as I mentioned, from confidentiality point of view, we can show them. So um, different uh, clear pass or um, kind of uh, mobile robotic platform already uh, there. Maybe here I explain a bit. Um, so. One of the key factors here, um, if I just go back a bit. Um, yeah. So one of the key factors here is as soon as you select the function, sensor, and the platform, um, you can now are ready to kind of flash the first uh, software into the target robot, which is kind of the platform selected. Uh, what we do is, the first thing is we validate the whole system dependency, system architecture behind of this. All dependencies should match. No kind of versioning problem should appear there. And um, if you see in the um, video, for example, if you by mistake or 
kind of non-relevant uh, function has been selected, you will receive kind of the checklist that these are like the errors that you have to handle um, to come back and kind of check the dependencies and come up to a, a workable version um, by this. And that's the first step that you can avoid system errors, debugging. Uh, lots of errors really comes in practice from system point of view that one can easily avoid that. So as soon as it's done, so the clone version will, will happening, one will uh, kind of uh, clone all the um, uh, softwares from the different repositories. It's kind of directly also to GitHub if there is any function or um, yeah, packages linked there. And you can automatically receive like the YAM file and the um, um, uh, launch file there. And um, as soon as it works, then we have a compilation once in remote PC to check and get rid of every single, to kind of review every single um, errors happening there. This will happen here. And finally, we flash it to the target PC. And once more, we compile it. And if there is any errors from the compilation point of view, we, we uh, refer it. And then there are, of course, some control things, three of them mentioned here, like for map generation, localization, and so on, which, yeah, just shows the principle of the tool. Um, just a few examples um, of what we have been already applied our platform. These are three examples. Um, kind of the first one is like one of our area of application with a pilot customer, which we are aiming for full automation of a professional cleaning machine, um, where we use our platform to build the first prototype. The second one is a kind of internal Bosch activity or internal customer for us that they aims to build a technology platform which they use automotive control unit. I don't know if you have any experience with automotive control unit, but this is really kind of one higher level of difficulties as soon as you want to make them running on, the, on, a, on a robot system. But so it was for us like that's the control unit there. It's just for a matter of presentation. And what we aim there is to transfer lots of know-how from automotive to kind of robotics and inverse. And finally, like one, again, practical example. I think this was a video, yeah. Um, one practical example where we tried like cross-traffic detection uh, for a tractor. So this is again with external company. We have two radar in front, two camera in front, and we kind of do classical, not classical, um, yeah, cross-traffic detection. This is one of the use cases that one of our external customer wants. Magic is <laughs> we are able, or we have done every single of that in an order of two to three weeks with one to one and a half engineers using our platform fulfilling Bosch kind of standards. Uh, this is one of the things kind of makes attractive um, um, or kind of highly motivated uh, for us, motivation for us to continue in this way of developments instead of spending a lot of kind of time, effort, resource for making such a use cases. And um, yeah, so as I already mentioned, we are on the phase that we work with selected pilot customer. Um, however, we want to kind of uh, promote it to external cost uh, companies that they kind of see and feel this pain of development effort. Therefore, we are highly open. If you want to improve your, uh, let's say, uh, a speed of professional mobile robotics developments, I still stress professional mobile robotics um, uh, developments, um, just contact us. If you want to integrate your um, software functions into our platform and promote uh, your software functions via us to use cases, we are still highly open. As I already mentioned, our platform, considering modularity, is kind of open platform, um, with this having kind of being considered in the architecture. And if you simply want to know more, just um, uh, contact us. We will be happy to just discuss about our technical concept. So, my personal vision and our vision is together we can make uh, mobile robotics fast and uh, reliable. Uh, hopefully, within soon, like next year, we don't see that big circle happening again. 
if uh, we work together. So by that, I'm at the end of the presentation, and uh, thank you for your attention. So, Milad, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, of course, we have time for questions. And for those, I kind of ask you to use the uh, microphones, which are in the aisle. So, all right. Oh, okay, Tilo is already helping with the mic. Hi, great talk. I uh, loved it. Thank you. Um, so, you said you're focused on, on mobile uh, robots, basically. Are you guys considering opening it up, for example, to manipulations and, and for example, robot arms? Because that's something we'd be more than happy to collaborate on. Mm -hmm. So... <coughs> Um, that could be the next step, I would say. But we are not finished with mobile robots yet. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so let's discuss it, because uh, so far our agenda is to finish, or our roadmap is to finish the, the things that we have in mobile robotics. We see a lot of great uh, activities uh, in this field, and uh, we saw a lot of a kind of potential with uh, mobile manipulation, for example, which is kind of the first stage to kind of bring these things together. But uh, why not, we, if we see kind of potential there, which could also match the activity that you today morning mentioned, why not? Yeah. Okay, there are questions over here, Tilo. Um, I have a question. Uh, I generally like the idea of modularity. Um, but my question is, actually I didn't um, figure out how how specifics are or can be implemented because each project, custom project, has specific. And I have a feeling that by building these components together might work for some simple cases. But even if you have to, if you have two cameras, for example, how you, how you, and where, and where is now ROS in between those components, pre-prepared components, to say which from which camera some some I do not know feature recognition yeah. is going to be done. Yeah, very good question. Uh, actually, I forgot to mention it. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we know that you, robotics is a use case a specific field. Yeah, and um, we don't aim that we fulfill 100% of the use cases with such a platform. This platform helps definitely to a start, not always from zero, maybe from 60, 70%, but I personally don't imagine that at some points this will be 100% covered. So in my point of view, um, you can um, reduce a lot of uh, time and effort uh, to come up the full use case, but at the end there is 20, 30, 40, I don't know, some percentage that you have to handle it especially, or use case specific. Um, so if the platform gets bigger and bigger, um, of course, one can cover more area of application. Um, however, if we stay in reality, if we say that um, kind of um, we want to only integrate like those modules that have the series level quality and so on, at the end of the day, there is a border that you need to do a specific de developments at, on, on top. I mean, this could be like a perfect fit for integrators, for example. They are like going from use case one to use case two, use case three. They can always have the basics, then go ahead for a specific development. Yeah, I have like a follow-up question to this. Um, how are you able to integrate like your new stuff or um, are you depending on open source techniques or how much of your thing is open source because Ross is coming from the open source world and now everything is getting closed source and we only have s specific APIs or what's the plan for that? Yeah, so um, like we use like <laughs> Ross and our platform is based on Ross. We are switching to Ross to uh, like not switching trying to fulfill, uh, let's say, uh, uh, ROS2 um, applications by mid of 2019 as well. However, coming back, like if there would be an open source version of this, we have been kind of in a talk with Mirko and uh, Tilo like some times ago about maybe we are Rosin, we come up with kind of maybe a smaller version or minimum viable version of that uh, to provide it to ROS community. But um, Kind of, to be honest on this, we didn't decide finally if we provide it open source or not. Not due to the commercial aspects, due to kind of this factor of reliability. 
because at some points you have to make sure that things are under control. And um, we were not sure if we just keep everything open, uh, we could uh, still keep that uh, reliability level up or not. This is ongoing discussion. Um, hopefully we can manage to find a smart way to even bring it as open source, at least one version of this. Yeah. If there are no more questions, then uh, you still will be available during the break, during yes. the uh, whole uh, day, I assume? Uh, not really, but uh, okay, one of but my colleague is here, uh, Simon Fichner. So in case, um, yeah, uh, and also Torben, so in case I will be gone, so there but are at colleagues least to until hope. the yeah. uh, break you will be here and yeah. uh, available for, for the questions. So then please applause for Milat. Thank you very much. Thank you.